All right. So hello, everyone. Welcome to Entrepreneurs International Network. My name is Keisha Carter. I am the organizer of EIN, and I'm super excited for having an amazing speaker for today, Sam Leibovitz. So Sam will discuss podcast success stories. But before Sam comes to our virtual stage to talk about podcast success stories, we want to talk about what EIN is and how you can get the most out of everything that EIN offers. I believe there are a lot of first timers here in the call. So I just want to say that Entrepreneurs International Network or EIN is an organization that helps entrepreneurs find free or inexpensive education that can help them to network and grow their entire business. So in every single event, we'll have education and networking session later during our Q&As and gratitude circle, where you can find your potential joint venture partners and clients. So we also have an app called Entrepreneurs International Network. And to download them on your mobile phones, just head on to Google Play or App Store and find entrepreneursintl.network to get access to a lot of other pieces of education. Or you can also, I will also put it down here in the chat box for the link of uh, the app. And if you go to our official website, that is eintalks.com, you'll be able to see the recording of all our past events that we've had. Plus, you'll be able to take a peek on our upcoming events and register there. So I highly recommend that you download our app and visit our website so you can get access to all the information that I just shared. <clears throat> So today's event will run for 90 minutes and we'll have our speaker give his talk for 45 minutes. And then after that, we'll have a 15 minute question and answer portion by the audience. And lastly, we'll give another 15 minutes for our audience to share their takeaways and their gratitude to our speaker. And after that, we'll be wrapping up and close the event by 5.30 p.m. Pacific. And with that, let's go to our amazing speaker for today, Sam Leibowitz. So Sam Leibowitz is known as the Conscious Consultant, is a facilitator, mentor, speaker, healer, serial entrepreneur, host of the top-rated uh, radio show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, and it's a three-time best-selling author and author of the number one empowerment book, Everyday Awakening. And so I'm more than excited to have Sam on our stage to share with us his informative talk and how we can benefit from podcast success stories in our business. Sam, our virtual stage is all yours. Uh, thank you so much, Keisha. I really appreciate it. And thank you all for coming out today. Uh, I'm really grateful that you're all here. Uh, just a little reminder for those who came in later, I do ask if you can, if it's possible, to please um, have your video on because I am going to ask questions like this one. How many people here listen to podcasts on a regular basis? Show of hands. And if I can't see your actual hand, you show your uh, virtual hand. All right, cool. Um, and how many people here... Um, I actually do their own podcast. How many people here have their own podcast? One, two, all right, cool. So uh, my intention with today is I'm going to give you all uh, some great information to help you if you have an existing podcast. Um, if you haven't started a podcast, but you're thinking about it, some valuable information to give you an idea of how you can use a podcast and how a podcast can really support your business and your brand because podcasting is not about any one thing and it's such a versatile medium that there are many many ways you can utilize a podcast that most people have never even thought of so i'm gonna share a screen um and we'll kick it off and get started um I actually call this presentation, I, I used to call it podcast success stories, um, uh, but now I'm calling it from conversations to cash. And this is what's possible for you in the world, in, in this virtual world. So just a little bit of background on me. Oh, and before I start, I forgot, please stick around to the end because I do have um, just a free offer. It, it's something if you're interested and you want to learn more, 
how you can book some time with me for free. So it's my gift to you. I normally charge $250 uh, for a session with me. I'm going to gift it to anyone who's attending today. So a little bit more about my background. I've been an entrepreneur since 1993. I've had businesses in several different industries, everything from uh, aerospace, video animation, IT, real estate, um, health and wellness. And now I'm the executive producer uh, and director of Talking Alternative Broadcasting, which is the, the division under which we run talkradio.nyc, which is an internet radio station. I've been running the station for over 13 years now. So uh, I think I might have learned a little bit in the process. I've produced thousands of episodes. We garner over 45,000 listeners monthly. We reach people in over 120 countries around the world. We had over 300,000 listeners to our station last year, and we stream 24-7, 365. Now, we're not necessarily live 24-7, 365, but we stream 24-7, 365. So anytime anyone goes to our network, which is talkradio.nyc, you'll always hear something. And this is one of the techniques that we use is we replay shows from the last several weeks. So if you missed it and you just happen to be catching you know, the station in the middle of the day when there's not a live show, you'll hear a show from the last couple of weeks. And actually, we found that with the replays, we get a lot more listenership for the different shows on the network. So question for you all, what do you think the number one challenge is for having success with a podcast? And I'm going to stop share for a second on this one. And um, yeah, if, uh, just just come off mute and and just shout it out. What do you think the number one challenge is? Keep doing it. Keep How doing it. How to present it? What was that? How to present? How to present? Okay. Anyone uh, else? The relative material to the um, customers, our customers. Okay. How to make money from it? How to make money from it? Uh, that's a good one. And uh, finding, finding uh, yeah. the audience. How do you get heard if no one's listening? Ah, finding audience. Yeah, that's a good one. Anybody else? What was that in the chat? Monetizing. Yeah, monetizing tends to be a big issue. All right. One Wonderful. More? Was it one more? Okay, we'll go back to the presentation. Content. All right. All very, very good answers. And Typically, yeah, that's what we talk about. People talk about money, time. You know, lots of times people say, oh, it just, it takes so much to do it. I don't know if I have enough time to do a podcast. You know, do I know enough about my topic area to do a podcast? You know, knowledge also tends to stop people. Marketing, how do I get the word out there, right? Someone said, how do I find my audience? Distribution, how do I get out there on all the different channels? There's so many podcasting platforms and there's so many ways to get out there. And how do I generate great content? A couple of people mentioned content. And what about getting great guests? Like people always worried, how do I get great guests? And thinking that that's so important. Sorry to burst your bubble, but actually it's none of these. So there was a New York Times article a couple of years ago entitled, Have We Hit Peak Podcast? This was before the pandemic, keep in mind. At the time, there were over 700,000 podcasts. Now, it's even more than a million. It's probably cl close to a million and a half to two million. Yet, between March and May of 2019, less than 19% came out with a new episode. So I want you to think about that. Less than 20%, less than a fifth of podcasts out there actually came out with a new episode. So that means less than one in five are active. So even though that number of a million might sound really high, the truth is, you know, it's a, it's a fifth of that number, probably even less. And actually the biggest challenge is being consistent. And, and there was also another report done about how 
I believe it's like the average podcast has less than eight episodes. And to me, I think that's a crime because you've put all this time into it. You've put all this effort into doing a show and you, you stop it at the very, very beginning. It takes time. First of all, it takes time to get used to doing a show, doing a podcast, getting everything together. It takes time to build up an audience. You probably don't even really have a good sense of what you're doing until at least eight, 12, maybe even 16 weeks out. So actually the biggest challenge is just being consistent. I believe uh, Mark mentioned that. Now, what I wanna go over with you today are some case studies of what success looked like for certain people and what they did to find that success. And these are people I actually worked with. These are shows that if you go to talkradio.nyc, you can actually find them, uh, archives of, of these shows on the network. So the first one I'd love to talk about is Tony Martinetti Nonprofit Radio. And he's my favorite. He's my favorite because this guy understood the meaning of the term commitment. He came on board shortly after I took over the station 13 years ago. He stayed with me over 10 years. And when he started his show, he was very specific. Now, Tony was, is a nonprofit consultant. He does two things for nonprofits. He does charity registration and he does planned giving. And that's it. Those are the only two things he does. But from his years in the nonprofit industry, what he noticed was that small to mid-sized nonprofits did not have access to all the same information that the big, huge nonprofits did, who had the budgets to hire all kinds of consultants and service providers and companies to do things for them. So he set out to serve that very specific niche, small to mid-sized nonprofits. That's who he spoke to. And what he did on his show every week, he didn't highlight nonprofits. He would bring on thought leaders in the nonprofit space. He'd bring on consultants. He'd bring on service providers, asking them to give valuable information to his audience which were people who worked at small and mid-sized nonprofits. Hope you guys are taking notes. This is valuable stuff. So what happened? He started to do all the right things. He worked with us. He would, he would do things like he'd go to all kinds of nonprofit uh, conferences and trade shows, and he'd talk about his show. He'd bring on speakers from conferences. He'd, he'd work with conference organizers to interview, and he'd actually set up at his booth at the, at, in the trade show or at the conference. He'd have a booth, and he'd set up, and he'd interview, and he'd arrange with the organizer and bring on all these different speakers who were speaking on stage, and he'd interview them on the same topic that they spoke about. So over time, he started building, started growing 1,000 listeners, 2,000 listeners, 3,000 listeners. And then all of a sudden, he got mentioned in a nonprofit industry blog as a top nonprofit show to listen to. Boom, he got a big bump in listenership. The following year, he got mentioned in a different nonprofit industry blog as one of the top 10 thought leaders in the nonprofit space. And they said, and if you like the other nine people on our list, they've all been guests on Tony's show. Boom, his, his show took off. He became the number one nonprofit show on iTunes. And not only was he the number one show, he had more than double the number of subscribers as the number two show. And he got known as a thought leader in the industry. Now, here's the thing that I found so interesting. He only does two things for nonprofits. But what started to happen is people would call him up and contact him for all kinds of services. Hey, Tony, 
can you do a marketing plan for my nonprofit? No, sorry, I don't do marketing plans, but I can put you in touch with someone who does. Hey, Tony, uh, I have some challenges with board governance. Can, can you help me with, with uh, coming up with rules and regulations for working with my board? No, sorry, I don't do that, but I have a, a lawyer who's a regular contributor on my show. I can connect you to him. Hey, Tony, can you do a prospect research? But no, sorry, I don't do it. Hey, Tony, what about technology? No, I don't do that. So what ended up happening is Tony formed a consortium of aligned professionals who he would feature on his show. They were like reoccurring guests who would talk about different aspects of nonprofits and he would be referring out this extra business to them. And of course, I'm sure he had some kind of reciprocal arrangement with them and he got some, some piece of the action for that. But what did it do for his stature to those professionals? If someone needed plan giving or charity registration, who do you think they went to? They went to Tony. And not only that, but because he became the number one nonprofit podcast, he started to get sponsors. He started to get companies on who wanted to get their product in front of people who worked at small and mid-sized nonprofits. First, he got one on. Then he got a second one on. Then he got a third one. At one time, he had five different sponsors for his show. So was he making money on his show? Absolutely. But more importantly, he raised his visibility in his industry. So it made it much easier. And when, he, when it came time to like work with a big client like universities and, and, and large nonprofits, it was a much, much easier point because they had heard about his show. So sometimes the benefit can be indirect and not necessarily direct. Does everybody get that? We good? All right, let's keep going. All right. So that's my first case study. My second one is this wonderful show that totally appealed to my geek side called Secrets of the Sire. So Secrets of the Sire uh, was done by this gentleman, Michael Dolce, who I knew from a business networking group, much like EIN. And uh, Michael comes to me and he says, Sam, I, I want to do a show on your network. And I'm like, now, I knew him from the group as a tech guy. He did websites, SEO, digital marketing. Like, that's the kind of stuff I knew him for. So I said, great, Michael, what do you want to do, a show on technology? And he's going, no, 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 that's just my day business. He goes, my real passion is comic books because I'm a comic book artist and I used to work in the industry 14 years ago, but then I got married and I had a kid and I had to make real money. So I started relying on my technical skills to, make, to bring in the money I needed. But now with the success of all the Marvel movies and DC movies and the TV shows, I feel there's a real possibility that I can create a really good show and reinvigorate all my comic book industry contacts. So I'm like, okay, great. So he comes on and he starts doing his show. Then after a little while, he brings on a co-host with him who he knew from 14 years ago. And the two of them would banter back and forth. They were great. They were really funny. I have to say though, they, they made me spend a lot of extra money because like whenever a new movie come out, they would talk about it and their show aired on Wednesdays. And so I'd have to go see the show before they talk about it. So I'd always have to go see like the Marvel movies opening weekend, which I hated doing because it's always so crowded. So we talk about that. And then he would bring on comic book artists and he brought on production companies and he brought on uh, creators and all kinds of people. And, you know, he would pepper it in. He wanted it to be interested, interesting to his audience who were like comic book fans but he also peppered in industry people who could be valuable strategic alliances for him, who people who could end up pitching pro projects to. And what happened at the end of two or three years of working with me, he was able to bring up his comic book work to the point that it was more than 50% of his income. 
So literally his comic book work outpaced his technology work, which is no small feat because it's very difficult to make money in comic books as an artist. But he was able to pitch different kinds of projects, different ideas. And then the real golden key happened. Because of people he brought on his show, they connected him to this entertainment company that loved his show so much, they bought his podcast. So he kept doing his show, took it, had to take it off my network. It, it changed the name, changed the format, changed some things around. And now he's getting paid to still do his show, which is his passion project. So you see, there's not just one way of thinking of a show. It's not just about getting a million listeners. Sometimes it's just about getting the right people to listen and bringing on people onto the show as a means by which to foster connections, to bring people on, to, to move your business and your brand forward. We got that? Awesome. Okay, and my next example, a fun kind of show called Follow Me Friday. So now this was a really interesting case study in a way because Follow Me Friday started off as a totally different show. And actually the host of Follow Me, or the, the, the main host of Follow Me Friday was originally a co-host of a different show. So this gentleman, JC, came to me and he did a show um, called uh, BizGrow that was all about business. Oh, he called it 21st Century Entrepreneur. He wanted to do it all about entrepreneurship and stuff. So he started doing his show. And then after about nine months or so, his business really took off. And then he had a kid and he had to go up to Connecticut and all these things happened. So he couldn't keep doing his show. But this woman, Joan, who he had brought on his show as a co-host, ended up taking over the show. So now Joan is doing 21st Century Entrepreneur. But Joan had a very different style from JC. JC was a legal background. He was very sort of straightforward, serious. And Joan was much more bubbly and lively and you know more of a people person. And then she brought on a friend of hers to help her with her show, Priya. And then they rebranded the show to follow me Friday. Joan was a social media a strategist. So her specialty was helping people with their social media. So follow me Friday, kind of like Taco Tuesdays, follow me Fridays. And so her and Priya started doing the show and they kind of, you know, it took them a little while to get in the groove, took them a little while to kind of, uh, you know, find their place, but they ended up doing sort of a Kathy Lee and Hoda style show and, and it was Friday afternoon, so it was like the last show before the weekends, and they were very casual, and they started highlighting different female entrepreneurs. And then uh, they, they got this one female entrepreneur who was a wine distributor, and the woman brought a bottle of wine into the studio. And so they opened it up on air, and they poured it in the glass, and they talked, drank the wine, and they talked about this and that. And they thought this was a lot of fun. So then the following week, they got a bottle of wine on their own. And so every week they'd open a bottle of wine, talk about it for five minutes and then go on with their show. So what ended up happening? First, they got a local wine store to sponsor their show by giving them bottles of wine each week. Then they got a wine distributor who sold to wine stores to sponsor their show and give them a bottle of wine each week. So eventually they were actually able to cultivate this whole segment of business, you know, Joan got to do the social media strategy and Priya was a video specialist of working with all these, these wine related businesses that she totally didn't work with before. And they got all these sponsors because of it. And it was because it was unique. They were being authentic to themselves. They were doing something they really loved. So this is another key point is being very authentic, being true to yourself. If you just try and be follow somebody's formula, be a cardboard cutout of someone else, or imitate a Joe Rogan or Alex Jones, you're, you're not going to get anywhere because that's not you. You want to attract your audience? Being uniquely you is the 
best thing you can possibly do. Is this making sense? Are, are you guys getting how like you can have different strategies for doing a show? You can find a lot of different ways to utilize a show to help you with your brand and your business. It's not about one thing. You know, I have people come to me that want to do a show for a variety of different reasons. So what does it take to have a successful podcast? The first thing is you want to know what your goal is, your result is. What's your intention behind having a show? Like Michael, it was all about you know, getting more work in the comic book industry. And that's exactly what happened with Tony. It was all about serving the small to mid-sized nonprofit industry. And it elevated his stature in the industry tremendously for Joan and Priya was just about having fun on their show and doing something enjoyable that they know would help to brand their business. Keep at it. Consistency is key. I cannot tell you how many times people have said to me, like, oh, I did a podcast for a little while, but I stopped it. I wasn't getting much results after two or three months. I'm like, what are you doing? You've just wasted two or three months of effort. It's what Seth Godin calls the long tail of marketing. Other thing is reuse, republish, and repurpose. One of the great things about having a podcast is that it's recorded. You can reuse and republish and repurpose your show in so many different ways. I have people who come to me to do a show strictly as a social media strategy because they want the audio and the videos to create little shorts that then they post on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and all over the place just so that they can be in front of their audience without trying to sell them anything, but just giving valuable information that helps their business. So another important aspect I just want to touch upon before we go into Q&A is the DIY versus DFY. Who knows what that stands for? Anybody? Come on, unmute, shout it out. What is it? Do it yourself and done for you. Yes, do it yourself versus done for you. All right. So it's really a big choice with anything in life is just because we can do something, should we? So for instance, doing it by yourself is, oh, I'm going to figure out how do I get on all the podcasting platforms? What equipment do I need? How do I get the music in there? How do I do editing? How do I do all this myself? Versus a done-for-you solution, which is working with a station or a network that already has the infrastructure in place so you don't have to worry about figuring all that out. With a do-it-yourself model, it takes a lot less money, but it takes a lot more time. And this is something that as entrepreneurs is very important to really understand is how much is your time worth? If you have to spend even an extra hour a week or two hours a week to produce your podcast, how many sales calls are you missing because of those two hours? How much are you not working with clients during those two hours? How much, if you were actually working with a client and, and, and making money during that time, how much more would you have made? It's an important consideration that sometimes in the beginning we, we, we forget. Do it yourself means you got to like the technical stuff because sometimes these things aren't very straightforward and they're problems. So, you know, if you like technical stuff, the details, great. The done for you solution takes a little more money, but takes a lot less of your time. So again, is that trade-off time for money? Which one is more valuable for me, for you? And, and me personally, I'm at that point. Uh, my time is very valuable. I'd much rather pay someone who already does it. And, and by doing using a done-for-you solution, you can focus on your genius. What's your genius? Your genius is getting your guests, your content, your business, coming up with strategies of how else can I use my podcast to really build up my identity and build up what I do. And with the done-for-you strategy, you're building on other people's expertise and experience. And that's something that's very key because when you're doing it all by yourself, 
let's face it, we don't know what we don't know. And, and think about it, you know, would you rather work with a professional who has 13 years experience and has worked with dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of hosts, produced thousands of episodes, or would you rather reinvent the wheel and try and figure that all out yourself? And so, oh, that's my freebie. We'll get to that. So that's kind of the, the bulk of what I wanted to bring to you. Also, the other thing to consider with a done-for-you solution, like if you're working with a network or a station, is the, you know, are there opportunities to cross-promote and cross-pollinate with other shows on the network? This is one of the things I'm very proud of TalkRadio.NYC is very good at that the, we bring the hosts together and they get to network with each other once a month. So what happens because of that is people get to know each other. They form relationships. They have, all of my hosts have been guests on each other's show, not because I suggested it to anybody, but because they met the people and they wanted to do it themselves. So that's another reason to kind of keep in mind, like, you know, doing it on your own, everything's on your own efforts, or are you working with a group of people who it's everyone's effort working together to help to get the name out there and help to, to really get you out there? Does that all make sense? Awesome. So uh, questions, and you can ask me questions about any aspect of podcasting, but with this part, I'd like you to raise your digital hand so we can go in order and you do that by going down under reactions and clicking on that and click on the thing that says raise hand and, and just pop your hands up there. And then I'll call on you in the order that I see you kind of pop up. Okay. So Lisa, what's your question? If you would unmute and Tell us what your question is. Hi, just a sec. I'm just trying to get my video going. Yeah, okay. Okay, I do lives every single day on TikTok. And I just right. want to turn those into podcasts. Right. So that's, that's really what I'm here for. I don't know if that's something that you do. Like, I'm sure there's an easy way of automating that. But because um, I've already got the audience and, and that, I just need to turn in they keep saying you know can you please turn this into a podcast so i'm like yeah okay maybe one day so I'm, I'm not quite as familiar with tiktok as other platforms the question i ask you is is it recorded on tiktok yes it is all right can you download the recording um yes i can okay so you download the recording it's going to be a video there are plenty of converters where you convert it, I'm assuming it'll be a .mp4, but you can just Google convert mp4 to mp3. There are dozens of free converters where you upload the file, it'll convert it and give you an mp3 um, out of it. And then you take that mp3 and then you can upload that as a podcast. However, keep in mind, like there are certain technical specs that I can't get into right now, um, there's, uh, you know, the, the image associated, there are tags you want to do, uh, you want to embed the logo, there are all kinds of other little things around that. But just to get the file you need to create a podcast is relatively easy. Okay. Okay, that was all that that was sort of all I was wondering if that's something that comes up a lot, because I've already got the audience, I just need to get the podcast going. Absolutely, absolutely. And, right. and okay. it's something again, that's part of the reuse repurpose. If you're already doing something, reuse it, repurpose it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. You're most welcome. You're most welcome. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. What's your question? Hi, Sam. When we're talking about consistency, uh, yep. is it like a definite time frame or number of episodes? How can I know that I reached consistency? So here's what I do. Uh, over the 13 years I've been running the station, I've kind of said, we only do weekly shows. And I've had people come to me and say, can I do a show every other week? I used to say yes. I stopped doing that when I realized that everyone who did, did not do a weekly show took forever to build up their audience, they would never have the patience and they'd be gone in a month or two because people are used to that weekly consistency. 
So if you, the minimum, minimum is weekly. I mean, if you really want to skyrocket things, you do it daily, but weekly is the minimum. I, I will not work with someone if they will not do a show at least weekly. And it's just from my experience. It's, I mean, you think about it from the time we're kids, we're sort of programmed by TV that like our favorite show and episode, like it comes out, you know, once a week on that week. I mean, even today, I, if I want to watch Secret Invasion on Disney, I got to wait until Wednesdays because that's when the new episode comes out, you know? Thank you, Sam. Thank you. You're most welcome. You're most welcome. Uh, Melissa. Hi, Sam. Uh, just wondering, could you walk us through a little bit of what it would look like to go ahead and get onto a platform, I'm assuming? I mean, somebody has to have a little bit of, it sounds like a little bit of a background with what they're doing, be a little bit well known. And do they just pitch it to somebody, you know, an executive producer on a podcast platform? Or how do you do that? And, and also, what kind of costs do you or do you think are involved about? So um, different networks charge different things. And when it comes to like having your show, most networks, pretty much if you pay their fee, they'll have you on there. Um, I can talk about what we do with talkradio.nyc and how I decide to work with someone or not, if that's what you'd like. That would be great. All right. So basically, I interview all my potential hosts. So we sit down, we're going to have a conversation. I'm going to want to know how long have you been in business? Now, look, you don't have to be well-known, but like if you've only been in business a couple of months or a year, probably a little too soon for you to work with me. But if you've been in business three, four, five, six years, okay. Then it's, you know, I, I get a sense just from talking to them, how well-spoken are they? Uh, you know, are they good at asking questions? Are they good at listening? Are they good at, you know, just the basic, you know, how... Are they, do they stumble over their words? Do they say things that don't make sense or not? And then it's, you know, what is the goal for the show? You, what are you looking to do with your show? I want to know that. Like, I know all my hosts' businesses pretty well, so I understand what they're trying to accomplish with their show. And oftentimes, because of my experience, I can then give them ideas about ways they can use a show that they might not have even thought of themselves. Now, over the years, I've offered different kinds of packages, different levels, different lengths of time. And it's just gotten to the point where I was like, this is ridiculous. It's too complicated and, and it doesn't make sense. I'm just going to simplify things. So now the way I've structured stuff, I do one all-inclusive package. It's 12 weeks. So it's 12 weekly one-hour shows. It includes everything, the production, the promotion, social media, show notes, transcripts, audio, video. You know, we stream our video, we simulcast it out to YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and Twitch. And we provide analytics. This is an important thing. When you're looking at different networks, ask them if they provide monthly analytics or not. Because if you're not getting, if you're not getting analytics, how do you know how many people are listening? How do you know what episodes they're listening to? And we do that. We download the analytic files from uh, our audio server, from our back end, from our website, from the podcasting platforms, from all the social media places that we stream to, put it all together in a giant spreadsheet, sort it by show, subtotal it, split it out, and then send it to the individual hosts once a month. So this way they actually get to see how many people are listening. Now, we're not a huge network. We don't get millions of listeners or even hundreds of thousands of listeners but we get 45,000 listeners a month. And that's a real number because I can prove it because I have the analytics file to show you X number of people listen to this episode on this channel, X number listened on that channel, et cetera. If, if you're looking to work with a network and they don't give you analytics, I wouldn't trust their numbers at all. If you want to just use them because they're, they do production, but, and, and you're going to do all the promotions, everything else on your own, great. But to me, it's very important to analytics. Now, how much do I charge? I charge $3,000 for 12 weeks. Now, I'm not the most expensive guy out there by far. I'm not necessarily the cheapest. But what I've been hearing in the industry is people who do equivalent to what I'm doing, charging four times as much. So it, it all depends on the sort of the quality of the solution you're looking for. 
And, uh, you know, when I work with people, sometimes, you know, depending on the person, sometimes they know exactly what they want to do and, and they've got it well worked out. And then other times I got a brainstorm with people like uh, this week, uh, actually on Friday at 1 p.m., we have a new show starting on the network, The Hard Skills with Dr. Mira Branku, which is a show about really it's about the soft skills. She's an executive coach and a psychologist. So it's talking about sort of interpersonal skills and how to be a good leader in the workplace by really working on what she's terming the hard skills, the more challenging aspect of your job, which is not the technical stuff, but the interpersonal stuff. We went back and forth uh, for several weeks, coming up with the title, coming up with a description, exactly who's her target audience what's the structure she wants to do for her show how is she going to use it and so we prepared a lot beforehand and now this week she's actually launching her show compared to other people like i had a meeting with a woman today who wants to do a show on ai and ethics and she she's ready to go her biggest thing is she wants to get it up and done quickly she wants to get it out there quickly she wants to get the episodes produced quickly so that she can work on getting sponsors i'm like great here are the few things that we need. As soon as you get those to us, we can get you up on the, on the website in a couple of days. We can get you going in about a week's period of time. So, you know, it's, you know we, we know how to be flexible. So it really depends. It's like, what's important to you? And, and this is a thing of like, when you're looking for a solution, what aspects are important to you? Is community important to you? You know, we do a lot to cross promote and cross pollinate between our shows not a lot of networks do that. Is that kind of thing important to you? For her, it's not important to her. She, for her, the most important thing is quick. So it's, it's really thinking about what's important to you with a solution. So um, I think that that kind of gives you an idea. Do you yeah, have any? no, thank you so much. And the analytics, it's interesting. When I ran, uh, produced a radio show and, and, and co-hosted, it was that that I was really focused on. And it really helped us out a lot to understand kind of where we were at. Um, okay, that sounds good. So if I flip the table just really quickly on you. So when you're sure. actually looking for someone and you are very clear about what you want to be doing, you know what kind of uh, audience you want and you obviously, how would you suggest going after researching what types of uh, platforms, you know, you want to go after, you know, whether they're international, national, in your subject area, that sort of thing, how would you suggest going about finding the right fit? Um, well, first of all, I'm a big believer in recommendations. Yeah. So like I network a lot. I know a lot of people. So whenever I want anything, I go out to my network and say, hey, who do you know who does this? And I keep asking that question until I get about five different recommendations. And then I'm going to go and interview the people. And I'm going to see, like, what kind of feeling do I get from the person? Are they just trying to sell me their stuff or are they really interested in me? You know, I'm going to ask some of those detailed questions and see, do they provide this stuff? How do they do what they do? You know, what other kinds of shows are, are there on the network? Could I potentially talk to one of their existing hosts and get a feel for like, hey, are these people as good as they say they are or not? What's the yeah, experience yeah. like? Totally. And thank you so much for your information, because I think that it's very valuable. And being in a similar sort of industry in the past in film and radio, it's it's so important and your your wisdom is is right on spot from you know my perspective as well so thank you so much and i really appreciate it oh wonderful melissa wonderful and yeah <laughs> if i'm, I'm going to give out my link in a minute um for you to book a call with me so if you want to have a call with me and if you have other questions i'd be more than happy to speak with you sure thank you so much wonderful wonderful who else who else has questions around podcasting this, this, this is your chance uh Mahara. Hi, Sam. Hi, everyone. Hi. Thank you so much for this presentation. I've really enjoyed it. Oh, Question wonderful. for you. This is the first I've ever, well, this is the first I've heard that there was such a thing as a network just for podcasts. So this is awesome. Here's my question, though. My new podcast is currently hosted on my from my website, mm -hmm. and it's streamed to the three major platforms. Mm -hmm. If I were to go on a network like yours, mm -hmm. do I have to take it down from my website? No, we it would. Does both. No, we would. We do both. I mean, if 
you know, if you want to keep like sending it to them, those there, we would help you to also get you up on other platforms. Which three are you on? Um, Google, Apple, uh, Spotify, Apple, and Google. Right. So you should also be on Amazon. You should okay. also be on Pandora and iHeartRadio. So, so we'd help you to get up on those. Okay. Um, and then what it is, is, is we'd be producing the show for you and we'd be providing you with the file. And then since you're already uploading to those three, so you would take care of those, we would take care of the rest, mm -hmm. but then you'd also have an addition to the audio file. You'll also have video to go with it. Awesome. Well, thank you. Something to think about. I appreciate it. You're most welcome. You're most welcome. Anybody else? This is your chance. Going once. Hey, Sam, this is Barb. I was asking yeah, in the chat. I'm sorry, I had some background noise going on earlier. But what oh. happened with Tony's story? What was the, uh, where did he end up with that, if you don't mind sharing? I, I don't mind sharing at all. He ended up, well, he moved out of New York City. So originally, just, just to give a little context to it, when I took over the station, we, we had a small studio in the Upper West Side of Manhattan. And all my hosts were local and they'd come into the studio and do everything in the studio. And then, of course, when COVID hit, we couldn't social distance in a small studio. We went virtual and we stayed virtual. And so, but Tony was with me when we were in person. So then what happened is he semi-retired. He didn't completely retire, semi-retired. And he moved down to North Carolina. So at the time, I didn't have a solution for him. So then he just started doing it on his own. And I believe he still does it. I don't know if he does it as frequently and I'm not sure if he's as active with it, but after 10 years of working with me, we did a you know 500th anniversary special. Um, but once he moved out of New York City um, at that time, that was it. Now I work with people all over the place. I mean, I've had hosts from as far away as London, England and Sydney, Australia. So I can work with people anywhere now. Um, but, but Tony, he also kind of, his business in general, he kind of semi-retired and he's living near the beach in, in North Carolina now. Okay, Barb? Anything yeah, else? sorry about that. I couldn't unmute. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. No worries. Okay. Uh, Don, you have a question? Uh, yes, Sam. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation, first of all. Uh, you had mentioned earlier that uh, some people will join a network and some people will do it on their own. Mm -hmm. And if someone did decide to do it on their own, um, what would, how would they start when it comes to investing in equipment? Where would they start with that? The most important thing I tell everyone is you want a really good microphone. A, a, a good microphone will make a huge difference in the quality of the audio. So start there. And then there are other things. And, and uh, you know, I, I, when somebody enjoys the network, I give them a list of equipment that, uh, that I recommend that's, that's good, but not super expensive. You know, it doesn't have to be super expensive. 150 bucks, you can get a decent microphone. Start with that. Perfect. Thank you, Sam. You're welcome, Don. All right. Anybody else have questions? Going once. Going twice. Hey, Sam. This is Anapama. Hi, Anapama. Um, first of all, thank you for sharing such an insightful presentation. Um, I have one quick question. Like, uh, what step one should take if um, I had to start, let's say, a uh, podcast on smart city or any industrial IoT use cases. So what are the steps one should take in order to create content on these type of topics? To create, I'm, I'm not quite sure I understand the question. What steps to create what kind of content? Um, smart city use cases or industrial IoT use cases. Oh, um, use cases. So, um, in case I know as you're talking about like doing case studies on your show. Yeah. So what I recommend, and this is something I often say to people who are coaches, who coach people on a variety of different topics is bring on a client who you've worked with, who's willing to sh share their experience 
and have them talk about their experience of what were their challenges? What did they work through? And what it was like for them to work with you to get through it. So this way you're giving people real world examples that other people can learn from and get something from. So if, if let's say somebody is a, 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 a a, um, a visibility coach. Okay. And so, you know, they bring on a client who let's say was very challenged with getting visibility in the beginning. And then what were the things they did? You know, how, what was it like um, to, to uh, create or do what they did? Um, smart city. Oh, 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 I see. I see. You're very specific to a specific industry. Um industrial internet of things um that's a very very specialized question um i'd rather not get into it for this audience because i want to keep things that are applicable for everyone but the same general idea i mean if if you know you want to create case studies you just got to find good examples but it's all about telling the story like don't make it dry and boring you always want it to be about the story how did people get what was the journey like how did they get from the beginning whatever challenges what did they overcome what were the techniques they used what are the processes they used to overcome to where they created a success that that is sort of the always the general thing and always remember you want to show not tell so show it in a story of of how they did something rather than just say oh i did this that and the other thing right sounds good thank you so much sam you're welcome you're welcome okay questions questions I love the questions part. Anyone else? Okay, so um, just to give you all my free gift, which again is a, a very valuable gift because I usually charge uh, $250 for this. But if you'd like to have a conver private conversation with me about your specific situation, about what you're doing, um, here's the link to book a call with me, links.talkradio.nyc.com slash book. And if you just want to get a hold of me, this is my information, uh, sam at talkradio.nyc. Our website is www.talkradio.nyc. And uh, I'll copy all that and um, put it in the chat as well. Okay. So give me one second and I will get that in the chat for you. All right. Well, thank you all. Oops. Thank you all for coming out today. I really, really appreciate it. I, I hope you found that valuable. And um, I do hope uh, that you know, if you hear of somebody say something like, oh, I'd love to do a podcast, but I don't know where to start. If you're going to think in your mind, oh, I know you got to talk to Sam because he knows all about this stuff. He's been doing it for 13 years. <laughs> so that's it for me. Keisha. Thank you so much, Sam. That was a very valuable lesson for us about podcast and we really appreciate you giving our time for us today and for now we have a last part of our event our takeaways and gratitude circle so we highly encourage you to raise your hand if you want to share any takeaways that you had on this event or if you want to give your appreciation to our speaker for today you may also unmute yourself if you'd like to speak anyone what was yeah. what was just like sorry, the top I, thing sorry i was just gonna ask what's the top thing you, you took away from today me oh i'll answer just because no one else is coming in i actually didn't hear what you said 
I thought no one else is coming and I may as well. Um, but yeah, no, I, I appreciated that. I just know there's a lot involved in a podcast and I did have one on my own years ago, but I only did a few and I didn't know what I was doing. But now I've got packs and packs of content out there that's just being wasted. So I've got, I'm just overloaded with content and don't know where to throw it. So I might actually need your help. So I'm going to book in a session just to oh, see if, okay. if, you know, if you could help me. So, Absolutely. Anyway, thanks so much for that. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else would like to share? For me, the uh, key takeaway was really in the statistics in the beginning that Sam has shared. Um, I was just overwhelmed about how many podcasts out there, but when I knew that only 19% are somehow regular in producing these kind of episodes, which means they're still a place and it might be crowded. Yes, it is crowded, but there might be a place still for new podcasts. Yeah, there's absolutely a place for new podcasts. And I'm pretty sure that number has gone down, meaning it's it's probably less than 19% now. Um, so even though the number of podcasts is growing, uh, the number of active is shrinking as a percentage. And the other thing too is, if you're very, very specific about your niche, about who you're talking to, there's always a place for your message. Thank you, Sam. You got it. Sam, I just wanted to shout out and say thank you for bringing up this idea of consistency because I'm an entrepreneur, brand new into the business, and consistency is everything, folks, in life in general, but especially, I think, when when you are jumping into a new, a new medium for me, which is podcasting. So just thank you for that call out. It was reassuring to know that, that you know, I can do this, even if it takes a little bit longer than my incredibly naive brain thought it would. I've learned the lesson, though. I'm two years into being an entrepreneur, and I'm like, oh, my God, this is hard work. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I am really enjoying it. And like I said, thank you for the reminder that it's okay that I'm learning as I go and, and just being authentic and being myself. So thanks very much for that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Look, nobody is perfect out of the box, right? We, 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 it takes time to learn. It takes time to get comfortable. It takes time. And, the, but the thing is, is the more you do it, the more you put it out there, the longer you stay with it, the more findable you become. I mean, I now, I, I don't, I haven't even put all my episodes up on the podcasting platforms. And I think I have somewhere around 450 episodes out there. That's a huge body of work. And then, you know, I'm, I'm there and there are many, many, many ways I can uh, uh, utilize that. And especially now with all the AI tools coming out now, I'm actually looks like I'm going to be able to take a bunch of my blog posts and hopefully eventually my podcasts and turn it to an AI chatbot that will be like speaking with me. Cool. What other key takeaways did people get? What's one thing that surprised you? Is there anything that, that kind of said that really surprised you, Don? Um, well, the one thing that really surprised me was that there's so many podcasts out there, and yet you were saying, I think, not even 20% produce a single episode. That really yeah. surprised me. Yep. Yep. And, and there's also a lot of really bad podcasts out there. <laughs> Don't get daunted by the number. There's really a lot of bad ones out there. <laughs> How about you, Susan? I just wanted to reiterate that you've made me think, is this something that I want to get into? Because can I commit to being consistent at least once a week for longer than that three month period? So looking at that hard first year and what it looks like, and again, committing to that, developing a strategy. For, for So that's connected to the goal for the podcast, but also that strategy as to, okay, titles, where am I taking it each week? But that's linked to every month in that first year. Right. And, and you know, that's kind of why I think people who work with 
a, a network or a, a, a station like my own, it's much easier to be consistent when you have somebody else doing all the technical work for you. Um, so it's like, if, if you understand the importance of being consistent and, and for the long haul, then it makes even more sense to work with somebody else to help produce your show so that some of that burden is taken off of your shoulders and you can really just focus on the part that really is all about you. But, but the other thing too, keep in mind, like you should also integrate it into what you're already doing. Like, don't think of doing a podcast as something all off on its own. That's this whole separate project you're doing, but integrate it in. Like if you're already blogging or, or, or doing any kind of marketing or social media, use the same topics for the podcast. So it's like, if I'm talking about, uh, if I'm talking about, you know, how to be an entrepreneur on my social media one week, then talk about how to be a social, how to be an entrepreneur on your podcast that week. Or, and at the end of your like social media posts, you can say, and I'm going to be talking more about this on my show next week. So tune in if you want me to answer your questions as well. You know, if, if you integrate it in, it, it's, it's, doesn't feel like it's a whole nother thing it's just a little extra work thank you and i saw someone put in the chat of how to make money uh off a podcast and and there are numerous numerous ways to make money uh, uh you know sponsorships is the one that everyone always thinks about um, but sponsorships is is its whole ball of wax, and I actually teach a whole course on on how to um, how to work with sponsorships and get sponsors for your show. But there are multiple ways. I mean, that's kind of part of the success story is why I'm showing you. Tony made money one way. Michael made money another way. Joan made money another way. So there there were many many ways. It's all about how creative can you be. And, and it's not always about the immediate. Sometimes it's about the, the, the indirect ways that you can make money with your show. You know, I, I had one guy, th this is a great story. So, so when I first took over the network, there was this tech guy who was doing a show all about like technical solutions and stuff. And he was a computer consultant. And what he would do is when he'd go on a sales call to meet someone in person, he'd carry around a thumb drive with him with all his episodes on the thumb drive. And let's say the guy was like, well, I need to know about remote work again, pre-pandemic days. Okay. And he's like, oh, interesting. You should ask me about this. And he'd plug a thumb drive into the computer, drag the file over to their hard drive and say, here, I did a whole episode just on that. Take a listen to it and let's talk again on Tuesday. And so then the person would listen to the episode because he knew it was Tuesday, Jim's going to call him. And he said, oh, I see you. And so when he talked to him, he goes, wow, I see you really know what you're talking about, but I really need to know how to apply this to my individual situation. I guess we need to bring you in here. I'd love to hire you. So by kind of talking and showing off on how knowledgeable you are and providing that value, you can then use that as a sales tool to help you to get sales. So that's also an indirect way. A another way to not necessarily make money, but save money during a podcast is think about your ideal client and think about everything you would want them to know before they walk through your door. Like a frequently asked questions, do a show about all those things. So then when you have a new client coming to you, say, hey, okay, before we get started, listen to this episode or listen to these three episodes and then we'll talk. And this way they get pre-educated and now in, you having to spend your time repeating yourself over and over again, you've got it recorded. You just have them listening to the recording. You're now saving time. So that's, it's not making money, but it's saving money. Any other takeaways? Anything else? Going once, going twice. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Thank you so much, Sam, for your valuable information. We are all truly grateful that you've given us time. 
um, you're sharing your skills and knowledge about this. And of course, your free offer. We're also so grateful for that. And also, thank you so much, everyone, for showing up at today's event. Our next event is going to be on August 1st, 2023 at 2 p.m. Pacific. And we are going to have Quinn Vo talking about AI with her topic, Will You Let AI Murder Your Business or Make You Rich in the Next 12 Months? To sign up for that, you can go to this URL, a link that I will put in the chat box. And once more, thank you so much, everyone. And we will see you on the next one. Take care. Take care, everyone. Thank you for coming out tonight.